What's up, everybody? My name is Omar Colon. I am the founder of AV Educate. And in this quick guide, we're going to talk about Pixel Grid. And in Pixel Grid and in true form fashion, we're going to talk about how do you download Pixel Grid first and where do you get this from? So I'm going to go full screen for you guys to watch my screen. Uh, I'm on a Mac as always. So I'm going to go to Safari and open up Safari. I'm going to go to google.com and in Google, I'm going to type in Pixel Grid. Make sure you get that wording right, Pixel Grid here. Go ahead and enter and you're looking for videowalrus.com. That is the name of the developer for this. So you'll find Pixel Grid is right here. And if you scroll down, you will also see you have a Mac and PC option. So again, you have both options available to you. If for some reason you have some kind of security block and you're not able to access the Mac store or the Windows store, you can go ahead and download the Mac version installer or the PC installer on your computer directly from the web page. Uh, super, super easy. So I'll give you guys a second to do that. I'm going to go ahead and click on this and start the download process, which I already did. So again, I'll give you guys a second and I'll come back to you when you're ready. All right, guys, welcome back. If you just open this for the first time, you've never used it before, you're going to get this default message. Don't worry, just save an instance and it'll save that for you. Or you'll keep seeing this message. Right now, this is the default, which you should be seeing the same thing that I'm seeing. And I'm going to show you the one key trick that I want you to do before you do anything else. So I want you to come up top here. I want you to go to file and in file, I want you to go to load LED editor. And you might not have a bunch of stuff here. So go ahead and get from the cloud and everything the developer has done by himself already. He's inputted in here for you guys. With all these, we're gonna hit select all, I'm gonna hit download, and that'll bring them all into here. And what I want you to do if you're in this section, so I want you to go to add, and in add, I want you to call this AV Educate, so that you guys remember where you learned this from. And in here, I want you to type in projection, and then here, I want you to type in 120 by 120. Don't worry about the rest for this scenario. This is just to show you something a little bit extra that I like to do with this program for my pre pro, and that I think you'll also like as well when you guys are doing your pre pro out to the real world. So I'm gonna close that out. I'm going to take this full screen and let's talk about this real quick. What I'm doing here is called the visualizer or what I'm calling the visualizer for this section. And in this section, what we're doing is we're looking at the visualizer. We're looking at the visualizer adjustments page and we're looking at the screen workshop pages and the screen workshop page down here. We're going to divide that into two sections. The left side we'll call the visualizer or the screen modifier side and the right side here we'll call the visual visual modifiers. And I'll go into that in just a moment, but let's start off from top to bottom, left to right. Let's talk about the screen visualizer. So the first thing you'll notice here is we have this one screen one up and screen one in the visualizer is called a grid. So I'm gonna come down here to the visual adjustments page and down here, I'm gonna type in 3840, 3840 by 2160, which is 4K. And you're gonna see that I've typed this numbers in, but nothing really has changed here. And the reason that is, is that we are still on grid mode. So in grid mode is here, I'm gonna click on canvas. And you'll see now, if I go a little bit wider, this is essentially a 4K canvas that we've now seen. So again, grid mode is the one, canvas is another one. And while we're in canvas, what I want you to look at is on the rest of this adjustment modifiers here, I have the raster box, which is this little white line here. So this is a very cool tool to have in video because it allows me to know when I get content from another source or from a graphics, where my ends are of that on my screen. So am I too far left? Am I pixel off? Am I missing a pixel in that? Uh, by having a raster box, I can really see that and see what's going on. The next one that's really, really cool here, and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in for you, do a one-to-one. -one. Look in this top corner where it says zero, zero. That's really important for a lot of the math that we're gonna do today. Um, don't worry, simple math, plus and minus. But for the math we're gonna do, you're gonna set offset cursor, and you can see that cursor is there, and it tells me uh, this box is in a zero, zero coordinate. So this upper, left hand corner is zero zero which is exactly where we want it to be at and i'm going to go ahead and turn that raster back on leave that box on and then i'm going to zoom this back out just so you can see this a little bit more clearly so this black area right this is still data it's still metadata that you could send down the pipe so you could put it as a transparent background and now it's an alpha channel that data isn't really there um, but you still have your raster box so it's still a 4k piece of content we can see if we zoom out here it's still a 4k piece of content uh, it just doesn't have that black information anymore, right? Because this is digital pixel manipulation. Uh, so we don't have that black data. But for this scenario, I want you guys to have that data there. And then we have a canvas name, which right now is blank. So we don't see it populating. And I'm going to call this AV test, right? So you see AV test, I'm going to click enter here. And in the upper left-hand corner, it just populated. And for this scenario, I'm going to go ahead and bring it down to the bottom right. And you can see canvas 3040 by 2160. AV test. So this is the file name now that I can export to multiple destinations or do multiple things with if I wanted to do that, or I can still do individual grid stuff. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, and I can also move this to the upper right. So top right, 
You can see it moves over there. I can move this to the bottom left as well, bottom left. Such as you wanna move it anywhere that needs to be shown so they get a total of what your total output is. And in this scenario for most video switchers and screen switchers and even media servers, 34 by 2160 is like that nice sweet spot to do a lot of things in one little canvas uh, down one pipeline or one cable, HDMI or DisplayPort, depending on your flavor. Um, so we're gonna use that for this example to teach you guys what we're talking about. And I'm gonna lead us to the bottom right-hand corner. For me, that just makes the most sense. And I think where we're not gonna have anything kind of constructing on that. Uh, then back on the right-hand side, we have the grid and the canvas, which we'll talk more about that in a moment. You have fit horizontally and then fit vertically, which is doing it to the canvas side. If we did the grid here, we can do fit vertically, fit horizontally to the grid. So remember, whatever you click on here is determined by whether you're on grid or canvas. Uh, so just a quick note on that. And then you can do one-to-one -one as well. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom this all the way back out real quick so that you guys can see what we're talking about. And uh, real quick, I'm gonna go to the next section right below that. So we can add a grid here. I'm gonna go ahead and add three grids, which I know you don't see anything happening, but I promise things are happening. Uh, to show you that, I'm gonna change this to center. Center. I'm gonna change this to the left, which is the one we can see, right, left, and I'm gonna change this to right. And if I go back to grids, you can see when I click on these left, center, right, that changes, and when I go to canvas, it doesn't. And I'll get to why that is in a moment, but before we get too ahead of ourselves, I just wanted to show you how to add something and change it so you know where it's at. The next thing I want you to see is I'm gonna add one more option here, and I don't really need this one, so I can go ahead and delete that. And if you see this deselect option here, go ahead and command hit D, and that'll just let so you can add a new grid, a new default grid, which for you could be zero, zero, could be a certain model you're using of LED tile, could even be a projector. Talk about that. So you have large grid names. And again, I'm gonna go back to the one-to-one -one here, just so we can really see what's going on here. And I'm gonna go down to right here where it says 1260 by 672. So that's my aspect ratio for this particular tile. In this scenario, we're doing an ER5, uh, but I'm gonna go to large, I'm gonna deselect that and you'll see right now, I have it down in the corner. So right side is down here with my resolution. So this is my right screen or my right LED, whichever one I'm doing uh, at this resolution. I'm gonna put that, put that back up because I do like the larger look here. I also have the color. So you can see right now it is uh, yellow. And if I click on that color wheel here and I click on this, you can see it goes to white. As soon as I click out of that, it's already there. No hitting uh, enter or anything like that. Click the color you want, get back out of it. Boom, it happens instantly. It's a very quick and easy way to do that. Uh, come back here, go back to yellow. I think that's kind of like the color that just looks good. I'm just used to seeing that at this point. And again, once I click on yellow, click out of that box and we're there. Then drop shadow. This is a very good visualizer just to bring that, make that text pop a little bit off the background because there's so many background options, which we'll get into a little bit. But the quick guide, I recommend it big time. If you haven't downloaded it already, go ahead and go to our webpage, download the quick guide. The link is for you in the description below. Download that quick guide. It's very, very, very useful um, to have. But again, I'm gonna get rid of that. Look at the edges right here on the R and the I, the G, the H here and the T, and you'll see that little shadow pop up. Uh, again, slightly bringing it just a pop off of the background so that you can see that it's there. Again, here's another time, just gonna click it a couple of times so you can see that. That I one might be a little bit tricky because it's right on the edge there, but you can see, perfect. And then grid numbers, again, we can add those or take those away. Here's our grid numbers. And we can go even further down there. So I'm gonna take the grid out of there just a second here, and we can talk about whites. So primary, secondary, or all white. So my grid is all white at this point. Or I can just do primary colors. So this RGB primary colors, right, that you have going on here. Um, or I can do both, primary and secondary. So now they overlay on top of each other, get to kind of the best of both worlds where the colors get a little bit too neon and a little bit too, too transparency. I can see the white out of that, where the colors kind of pop off of the background, I can see that. Um, very useful tool to have. And then again, the last thing we're gonna talk about here, and then we'll dive into the workspace at the bottom here, which is where we gotta really dive into things and get a little bit crazy uh, to make this make sense. You can see that I can change from Again, this 1-1 one, one to this 415 here, right? So here's my rows and columns, which correlates down to the columns and rows. I can also change up the columns and rows here so that I can see columns and rows. You can see it down here, right? Columns and rows. That's where that correlates to. Or you can do columns and letters. So you can see I have columns here and I have letters. You can see it's A, B, C, D, all the way to I, and then one, two, three, four. So one, three, four for my rows, and then uh, 15 for my columns, essentially, or now that they're letters. And you do the reverse of that. You can do your rows as letter instead if this is your preference. So again, multiple ways to do this. And then my favorite, just if you want a, a quick number count without having to do any math. Again, I have 
one of 60 tiles I need for the ER5. In order for that to work, I need 60 tiles to make this one screen. I have three screens of that right now, so I would need 60 times three to get my total count, uh, which is really, really good to have. I'm gonna go ahead and change this back to the default, which is rows and columns. So you guys can see that real quick. And let's go ahead and dive into this bottom piece a little bit more, which I call the workspace. And again, I talked about how this is divided into two sections here. And I'll show it for you guys again so you can see that. But again, the left side will be our screen modifiers and the right side will be our visual modifiers. So let's go to the screen modifiers first. So you can see this. I'm gonna zoom out here for the visualizer. So here's a zoom out of this. And what I wanna show you is real quick, I'm gonna change to that setting that I had you guys build at the beginning. Remember we had to do a projector. So I'm gonna do my center screen as a projector just for the shits and giggles. I'm gonna go ahead and click here, scroll all the way to the bottom and create that projector. And now I have this projector, which is 120. Oh, I forgot a number by 120. All right, so you can see I already have it populated in there. And I'm gonna do 16 by nine. And what happens now is because I'm doing 120 by 120 and I'm doing a 16 by nine, I have 1920 by 1080. So I have a really clean number to work with. I like that a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and shift that over on the X axis. I'm gonna shift that over by 672. Oops, I'm on the wrong screen, apologies. I'm gonna go and put that back to zero. Go back to our projector and shift that 672 or 672 pixels. And all I'm looking at is this right here, right? So it's 1260 by 672. Uh, sorry, so I said the wrong number there. So 1260 is what I need, 1260. And now I'm at right at the edge of 1260. So this is the right side, the center side. And then for the next one I got to do, so I have center, I have right, I need the left one. So the left one, what I want to do is I want to go down 672. And now I'm in between all this and I've got this nice little 4K output with three different destinations on it that I can create content on. I can slice it up. I can give this to my graphics team, give it to my operator team, give it to my screen switchers, my projectionists, and they have all this data that they can use right off the bat, right? I also see that, you know, this might be too much data. So I could change this to 1080, kind of cut that in half. Uh, you know what? I forgot about the other one. So I'm going to go back to 1200 and actually we're doing 1260. So I'm going to do 1400. Ah, oh, let's do 1450. And now I have a little bit of leeway here and 3040 is a little bit too wide, but I'm okay with that. It still fits within that raster I wanted to do, which is a 4K resolution. Still fits in there. Still looks pretty clean. Uh, so I'll leave it the way it is. And again, just to move this around, I just moved the X and Y coordinate on that. Uh, on the background here, there's tons of options, but for the projector side in particular, which we wanted to do, I'm going to use my favorite one, which is transparency. So transparency on my projector, and now you can see my projector is transparent. Uh, so there are a plethora of these test patterns. They have different purposes and different meanings. Again, download our quick guide. We'll dive into all those purposes and meanings, and I'll show you what each one of those means with the visual, what that looks like, just so you guys have a better understanding of it, including everything else we've just gone over. So you guys have a visual way to look at it. You can see it, watch this video as well, and then you can also do it on your own uh, to make sure you're following along and make sure you're understanding what we're talking about. Uh, and then for the projector side, what I want to show you is a little bit of a tweak you have to do to make this actually usable um, for your shows. But essentially, we don't need the grid, right? So we can get rid of the grid. Uh, the raster is always good to keep. I would not get rid of the raster. The IDs we don't need as well, so we can get rid of the IDs, get rid of those. The circles are great for projection. A circle is a circle is a circle always, so it's good for referencing. Uh, the crosses, uh, you don't need the cross, but I highly recommend it. It's really good if you're doing an ultra wide or if you're doing a convergence to have that cross to really help line things up. Then you have your corners, which are the circles. Highly recommend you keep those. Again, a circle is a circle circle. If you get into warping or mapping um, or any kind of distortion of the image, you still want to make sure these look proper so that you're not distorting too much of the image. Or at least if you are distorting the image, you can get it back into alignment so that that circle still looks right. Uh, and accent. Then you have a logo option here. Let's go ahead and get rid of that logo. We don't need the logo for this example. You can get rid of the logo on the other ones as well, which you can see I'm doing over the top there. And then the color bar. So again, color bars is preference here. You get the center in the middle there, or you do color bars. I like color bars. A lot of times I want to try to match things up as quickly as possible. And the color bar gives me a lot of information that I can use. And again, the quick guide will dive a little bit more into what those options are for you and why your color bars are so good to use. Then you have the grading, the stats. Don't recommend using them too much, but there are options you guys can use. You have a live output option here, which I can't really show you right now because I'm on one system, but I'll try my best to show it at the end of this clip if you want to stick around for that. Um, and then you have as well the mask option. So this is really good if you have to set up for pretty much a uh, media server example. If you want to get things lined up properly, you can do a mask version to make sure things fit within there. And then grid solo as well. You have another option there for your grids. 
which you can see how that looks on that side. And the last and most important part of the bottom here is I can save grid as. So right now I have that projector. I can save that grid, just the projector, so grid center. And then I can save that individually and I can also save the left one, save grid as, and save that there. And the right one, save grid as, save that. And then I can also do save canvas as, which will save everything I've done on the 3040 by 1450 canvas that I've created essentially. Let me go ahead and save that. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second by going back to my desktop. In my desktop, you can see I have the left side. I have the right side, right? Because we did save grid. And then I have the projector one. And finally, my whole canvas here, which we can see canvas test. So there's my canvas. We can see it's all laid out there. And again, if you're big into the pre pro or if you're not doing pre pro already, it's a great tool to use for pre pro. And if you're still here and you're still hanging out and you want to learn one more thing because you're a resume operator or a manual operator, this is the very, very best thing about this. If you don't know what a CVG file is, apologies, if you don't know what that is, you go to File, go to Export. You can export these directly to Malumen or directly to Reslum and get this file, this data information to line up perfectly with your pre existing content. If you don't know how to do that, I recommend you take one of our classes. Until then, watch this video one more time, download our quick guide. It has all the information you need about what these little buttons are, what they do, more information about that, and even more information about these backgrounds and how to use these to your advantage on a show site. Each one of these things has different pros and cons of what you can look for, what you can do to really push the limits of your box so you can check for different things uh, on site. Really powerful tool. Um, it's an amazing product. I highly recommend you guys download this. Got you guys up and running as quickly as possible. Download the quick guide again, just for reference for you. It's a little ebook, and it'll break down even more and more about what we talked about here. Have a good one, guys, and keep leveling up.